guys! Hagrid once said that there's not a single witch or wizard who went bad who wasn't in Slytherin. But what houses were all of the Death Eaters really in? To start off, there are quite a lot of Death Eaters who are in fact confirmed Slytherins. There's Malsabur, Rosier, Wilkes, Avery, Bellatrix and Rodolphus Lestrange, Regulus Black, Severus Snape and Lucius Malfoy. Then there are a lot of Death Eaters who were very probably in Slytherin House, Electo and Amicus Caro, because they display Slytherin traits and values and they really don't fit into any of the other houses. Then there's the fact that family members usually end up in the same house and Crab, Goyle and Not Senior really act like Slytherins. And Scabia seems to have gone Slytherin because when he captures Harry, he tests him by asking him where the Slytherin common room is. So that leaves us with Antonin Dullahoff, Barty Crouch Jr, Walden McNair, Augustus Rookwood, Corbin Yaxley and Thorfinn Rowell. And Junkson, who took part in the Battle of the Department of Mysteries but was never seen or heard of again. So I'm going to leave him out because we really don't have any information about his personality traits. Disclaimer, by Death Eaters I mean anyone helping you know who and not necessarily just Voldemort's inner circle. I am aware that Fenrir Greyback and Scabia were not in fact confirmed Death Eaters. Disclaimer number two, Slytherin is an amazing house. The fact that some Death Eaters were Slytherins does not mean that all Death Eaters are Slytherins or indeed that all Slytherins are Death Eaters. This video is not meant to harm the reputation of Slytherin house. Anthony Dollarhoff was put in Azkaban after torturing countless muggles and non-supporters of you-know-who. He's obviously very brave because he participates in pretty much every battle that we see in the books and he's also very impulsive and rash. For Hufflepuff, of course, you could argue that he is very loyal towards Voldemort as well as towards the other Death Eaters. At the beginning of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, there is a scene where Yaxley reveals that he's managed to put an imperious curse on Pius Thickness and Yaxley claps him on the back. He is also very cunning and ambitious which are all Slytherin traits. But I think that the most likely house for him is Ravenclaw because he was clearly a very knowledgeable and talented wizard. He killed the Pruitt, he knocked mad -Eye Moody out, he cast a non-verbal spell on Hermione that was so powerful that it almost caused permanent damage. And in the end it took Flitwick who was maybe the best or definitely one of the best duelists in the books to take him out. So I think he would have been in Ravenclaw. Warden McNair managed to stay out of Azkaban and got a job at the Ministry working as an executioner. He's very brutal and aggressive, which is quite a Gryffindor trait, sadly, but also quite ruthless, which would fit Slytherin. Augustus Rookwood worked for the Department of Mysteries and gave you-know-who secret information about the Ministry. He showed a lot of cunning when he got Ludo Bagman to tell him everything he knew. But clearly he's also very, very clever since he used to work at the Department of Mysteries and I don't know how you get a job at the Department of Mysteries or how you can stay working there without getting kicked out but I would imagine that to do that you have to be very interested in all kinds of types of magic and be very knowledgeable about them so I think that he would have been a Ravenclaw Barty Crouch Jr. posed as Mad-Eye Moody for a whole year. There are a lot of arguments going on about Barty Crouch Jr.'s Hogwarts house. Some people think he was in Hufflepuff, some argue that he was in Gryffindor, but it feels like the two main teams are Ravenclaw versus Slytherin. Now, the Ravenclaw arguments are pretty straightforward. First of all, he achieved 12 OWLs, which clearly shows that he's intelligent and that he values studying a lot. And then also, he managed to fool everyone that he was Mad-Eye Moody for a whole year, which shows a whole range of Ravenclaw attributes. 
He needed to be intelligent and to regularly brew the polyjuice potion. He needed to be very, very knowledgeable as he actually taught defense against the dark arts for a whole year. So he obviously knows a lot about the dark arts and defense against the dark arts from a practical as well as from a theoretical perspective. And then also he figured out all these ways to get Harry to win the tasks in the Triwizard Tournament, which requires a lot of creativity, which is also a Ravenclaw trait. There's also quite a case for Hufflepuff because he's very, very loyal to Voldemort. He gets very, very angry at Death Eaters who weren't loyal to him. And Voldemort himself tells Pettigrew, I need someone with brains, someone whose loyalty has never wavered. He's obviously very brave as he pretends to be Mad-Eye Moody right in front of Albus Dumbledore's nose for a whole year. He shows a lot of cunning, resourcefulness, ambition, and he uses any means to achieve his ends, which are all Slytherin traits. Looking back at Barty Crouch Jr's history, we know that his father hated everything to do with the Dark Arts, and that his father never paid much attention to him when he was younger. Had Barty Crouch Jr. been in Slytherin House, some people argue that his father would have paid more attention to him and would have done more to prevent his becoming a Death Eater. Other people argue that perhaps the reason why Barty Crouch Sr. never paid much attention to him was that he was a Slytherin and he was disappointed that he wasn't in Gryffindor or Ravenclaw or whatever his original house was. Some people also argue that Barty Crouch Sr. was definitely a Slytherin, as he does show quite a lot of Slytherin traits. Thulfin Rowell is the Death Eater who throws curses everywhere during the Battle of the Astronomy Tower. Obviously he's very impulsive, just throwing spells everywhere, which is very much a Gryffindor trait. Rowell was rather ambitious, and he seems to have been very cunning as well. It was him and Dullahoff who caught Harry, Ron and Hermione in a cafe after Bill and Fleur's wedding by dressing up as builders. Then again, we don't know who thought of the plan. The credit for that might go to Dollahoff and not to Rao. We don't meet Corbin Yaxley until late in the books, but we know that he evaded Azkaban and had quite a good position at the Ministry. He joined in the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, where he took charge, urged Draco to kill Dumbledore and attacked Greyback when he didn't follow orders. Later on, we see him in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows when Harry, Ron and Hermione go to the Ministry. Clearly, Yaxley must have been a very able wizard or else he wouldn't have been able to put the Imperious Curse on Pius Thickness. But there are lots of little scenes in the books, like Darlish the aura, let slip that Potter will not be moved until the 30th, the night before the boy turns 17. Snape was smiling. My source told me that their plans lay a false trail. This must be it. No doubt a confundus charm has been placed upon Darlish. It would not be the first time he's known to be susceptible. I assure you, my lord, Darlish seemed quite certain said Yaxley. If he's been confounded, naturally he is certain. Where you can kind of see that he's not very interested in learning as much as possible or just isn't all that intelligent. During the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, he takes charge and bosses everyone around, which is very much a Gryffindor slash Slytherin thing to do. Also, throughout that whole scene, he does everything he can to make sure that everyone follows Voldemort's orders, which is either a Ravenclaw or a Slytherin thing to do. Gryffindors are very reckless, and they normally wouldn't follow orders perfectly, and Ravenclaws would either question someone's orders, or if the situation wouldn't work with those orders, they think of some way of adapting them, rather than blindly following what people tell them to do. Yaxley stunning Greyback when he failed to obey his orders shows that he's very ruthless. And we also know that he worked his way up at the Ministry, which shows a lot of ambition. 
And combined with everything else, following orders exactly, bossing everyone around, wanting to be in charge, it seems clear that he was in Slytherin. For those of you who are wondering why I haven't talked about Fenro Greyback, it's because I don't think he went to Hogwarts. Lupin makes it clear that he wouldn't have been allowed to go to Hogwarts until Dumbledore became headmaster, and Fenro Greyback is a lot older than Lupin. It's also possible that other Death Eaters went to wizarding schools abroad, especially Thorfinn Rowell, Junkson and Anton Dollarhoff, who had quite foreign sounding names. And also we know that Lucius Malfoy considered sending his son to Darmstrang, so quite a lot of British wizards might have gone to wizarding schools abroad as well. How do I conclude this? The only Death Eater who was definitely not in Slytherin is Peter Pettigrew. There are a couple of other possible candidates, the most promising of which I think are Augustus Rookwood, Antonin Dollarhoff and Barty Crouch Jr. Just remember that not being a Death Eater doesn't mean that a character is good. Remember that Romilda Vane and Cormac McLagan were Gryffindors. Quirrell, Gildroy Lockhart and Marietta Edgecombe were Ravenclaws and Zachariah Smith was a Hufflepuff.